It is the integrity of God, watch this voice of faith, it's the integrity of God that establishes our faith in God. Our faith in God, it's on the foundation of God's integrity. So therefore, God's integrity doesn't move. So it is the integrity of God that establishes our faith. So faith is not built on a man. Faith is not built upon what the pastor says. Faith is not built on some church denomination. Faith is not built on any of those things. Our faith is built on the integrity of God's word. And God's integrity, watch this now everybody, is built on his loyalty. He cannot deny his own selves. It's built on the loyalty of God. When God says something, he has to keep his own word. So God is a God of integrity, but his integrity is built on loyalty. So he's the God of loyalty. And watch this now. God's loyalty is so strong, it's beyond human comprehension. It blows your mind when you understand, try to understand God's comprehension, comprehending God's loyalty. As soon as you think you know God and you figured God out, he blows your mind with something else he does. Because when God tells you he's going to do something, it doesn't matter if it's hundreds of years later, he's still going to keep his word. It's God. It's God. It's God all by himself. And, and God will keep his promises. That's why Isaiah 55, 8 says, For our thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. It's not. So God kept his promise to Abraham, watch this here, who had been dead for over 400 years. God keeps his promise to a dead man who's been dead for over 400 years that he would bring Israel out of Egypt, out of slavery, out of bondage, and to the promised land. When that happened, Abraham, that was 407 years ago. So God keeps his word. He changes not. So when God tells you he's going to do something, he's going to do it. You can take it to the bank. He's loyal. He's the God of loyalty. And so that's why Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent, he said, and shall he said not, and has he spoken, has he not do it, make good of it. So when God makes a promise, it is good as done. That's why Jesus said so, mo so importantly in Matthew 24, 35, I want you to write this down. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away. He said, but my words shall not pass away. God is the God of loyalty. Can we give God some praise right for that alone? Hallelujah. So we know he's going to keep his word. We know he's going to stand on his word. We know he can't lie. We know he can't deny himself. This is the one foundation I want you to understand is that he's not going to lie to you. Once he tells you he's going to do something, he's going to keep his end of the bargain. And that alone, man, that's what our faith is built on. It's built on the integrity of God. But the problem is we live in a world where disloyalty and dishonesty rules. We live in a world where people are not serious about being truthful and faithful. The disingenuous, genuous. They don't trust each other. We live in a world where deceitfulness and lies and con exist. You can't go on YouTube without they clickbaiting you. It's just the world we live in. So we've gotten, watch this here, we've gotten accustomed to not trusting people. We've gotten accustomed to being skeptical. Even in our homes, marriages are fragile. Friendships and relationships are fragile. The Bible says a house divided cannot stand when parents and, uh, against children and children against parents and no one's trusting each other. is because our world that we live in has built this foundation for us. We can't trust our children getting on the bus anymore. We can't trust the school systems keeping our kids safe. 
with all the things that are happening all around the country. It's very difficult to even fly now, anywhere now, with fights and with threats and all of these things that's going on. It's everywhere. The world has been conducive of disloyalty and dishonesty. And so then you come to church, and now you've been forced to hear the man of God, and he's trying to get you to trust him. And you can't understand why you're struggling to trust somebody because you think that the man of God want to get something from you. So therefore, you're not, you're not tied, then you're not giving off, and you're not sowing seed because you think that they want something from you as if nobody else does. The only time you put your guards up in church. Supposed to be the safest and holiest place during the week. You got bells on. You got, you, you, you got God on. Everywhere else, you let it down. Because you don't trust. And because you don't trust, watch this here. You've backslid. Because the world that you're living in is dishonest and disloyalty and, and, and you're disillusional. And, and so you don't trust anybody. Those who are married, you question your husband when he says, I'm just going to pick up a newspaper at the corner store. We're just struggling to trust. And so you're trying to find a happy place. So you said, I ain't trusting nobody but myself. But you can't live by yourself. You got to trust somebody. And so you get to church, you go, you know what? You know, I, I, just don't, I just don't trust the church. How many times have we heard that? I just don't trust what they're going to do with the money. That was never your assignment. Did God never told you to trust what they're going to do? God said to tithe, to give offering, to sow seed. God said, if they ain't doing right, I'll deal with them, but I don't need that to be your reason to deal with them. Can somebody give God some praise? So we're struggling with loyalty. We're struggling with trust. And watch this here. God said we backslid, but this is the thing that blows my mind with the comprehension of God. God said, I'm married to the backslider. I want you to go there with me. Jeremiah 3.14. I want you to read it for yourself. God said, I'm married to the backslider and I ain't giving up on you. That's why you can't understand when you ain't done right and you ain't lived right, you still been blessed and you can't figure out, maybe I could keep doing this. No, you on borrowed time, you on grace. Somebody ought to give God some praise. That's why I shout every day for grace. God knows we ain't been doing right and we ain't been living right and we ain't been tired and we ain't been giving off. No, and, and you've been getting away with it. Yo, you have never got away with it. God say he's married to the backslider. God say I'm going to love you until you love me back. Somebody ought to give God praise. I want you to see, look at, I want you to see this now in Jeremiah 3, 14. Turn, O backsliding children, said the Lord, for I am married to you. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. God gave me you to feed you with knowledge and understanding, but you don't trust me. Because you live in a world where the world is disloyal and dishonesty. God said, the one place I've given you, I've put pastors, bishops, and apostles, I put them in your life, to share with you the knowledge of God so you might trust God and learn. Tithing is for you. The one thing you get upset about, it's for you. It's like the child who don't want to eat anything green. No green vegetables, no green beans, no collard greens, no turnip greens, no cabbage, no nothing. They're upset because you put it on their plate and they don't understand it's good for them. They got to have it, but they're upset because you put it on the plate. God said, the tide is for you. you upset, but I put it on your plate so I can bless you. Somebody ought to give God some praise. I want to show you in the Word of God, I want to show you. I want you to go to a, a very traditional scripture, Malachi 3, 8 through 10. I want to show you, you're going to find out six times 
that the Bible says you. Tithes is for you. This is how God blesses us. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. You can read from the King James. Malachi 3 8 says, Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, What do you mean when did we ever cheat you? You have che cheated me of the tithes and offering due to me. You are under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into the store so there will be enough food in my temple. If you see, do, says the Lord of heavens, I will open up the windows of heaven for you and pour out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to receive and take it in. Try it, put it to test. The tithes and offering is for us. This is how God blesses us. The very thing you struggle to trust is how God gets it back into you. It's us. So because of this loyalty in your life, so what happens is, we don't trust God, we don't trust anything or anyone, and so therefore we backslide. And yet, the comprehension of God blows my mind. I, I can't comprehend God. Even when we don't do right, he's still married to us. Why? Because he told your parents and your grandparents and your great-grandparents and your ancestors that I was going to love you in spite of. And he made that vow to them because somewhere along your generational path, somebody was faithful. And God said, I am going to see it through. And they've been dead for a hundred years. And you ain't been doing right and living right. And yet God has covered you, kept angels outside of your door while you slept at night. In crowds, when other people got hurt, God let you come out of there and you ain't nothing happened to you. God has covered you and you can't understand. In accidents where you should have been hurt, God let you get out of there uh, with no scratches on you. Somebody ought to give God some praise. It's because he's a God who keeps his word. Hey, thank you so much for stopping by our YouTube channel. I pray that the word inspired you and bless you. And if you were blessed, listen, tell somebody, share it with somebody, and let them know like and subscribe to our youtube channel listen we want to know where you're coming from where you're watching leave a comment let us know how you're inspired how can we pray for you and all those wonderful things but most importantly we want to see you back on our site again soon god bless